So if you haven't yet, go ahead and take a second and um, look at the information. Um, right there on the screen in front of you. And let me know if you all have any questions or let people get logged on a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about motivation to change today. So if you can, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen if you haven't seen that yet. And we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to get the webcam up and going. Okay, can you guys see me too? Okay, awesome. So um, for those of you who have not met, I'm Jordan Harold. I'm one of the health behaviorists here at the Weight Management Center. And we are going to be talking today in the virtual group about mustering the motivation to change and what it takes um, in order to have that happen. So. Um, today's group is going to end a little bit earlier than I normally do, so just to kind of give you a heads up about that. Um, there is a handout down at the bottom. Um, you can see under files. You can print that out. If you have trouble, you can definitely let us know. As soon as the group is over, I'm going to end the meeting, and you'll have the chance to click on a survey. And that survey lets us know kind of what you thought about the topic, how you're liking virtual groups, things like that. So we use that information. So um, let us know. And if you fill that out, your name gets entered in to get a perk a point at the nutrition shop here at Country Club, or if you're logging in from Greensboro and, and Greensboro, too. So um, I want you to do a couple things before we get started. Since you have your pen and your piece of paper, I want you to write down two things for me, OK? Number one is, why did you enroll in the Weight Management Center program? What was what was the motivating factor for you that allowed you to enroll in our program? OK? That's number one. Number two is, what is motivating you now? They can be the same, or they can be different. OK? I'll give you guys some time to do that. You don't have to share that. Um, at this point, but we're going to kind of talk about some things throughout. And if at any time you do want to share those things, you totally can down in the text box where you've all been typing so far. Um, so yeah. All right. So number one, why did you enroll in the program when you enrolled? And two, what's motivating you now? OK, so a lot of people come and they say, I know what to do. I just keep not doing it, right? Um, you're not alone. Everybody struggles with this for some at some point in their life. It may not be necessarily about weight management, but we all sometimes have something we want to do that we don't do. You know, like I don't know. What about I'm going to make sure I keep up with the laundry during the week, right? We want to do it, but then it's, by Friday it's piled up in the corner, right? Or our laundry basket is full. Um, so. A lot of times, people will come into our program and say, I know what to do. I want to do it, but I love food. But it's too hard. But I don't have time. Um, there's a lot of different things that can stand in the way of what we want. So it's totally OK to both want something and not want it at the same time. And that's kind of confusing, but it's true. Um, have any of you ever felt that way about something? Not necessarily weight management, but it could be but losing weight or um, anything else that you can think of. Anybody want to share an example? I'll give you guys a little bit of time in case you do. Looks like somebody's typing. So while they're typing, 
the whole phenomenon that we're talking about, about wanting something and not wanting it, is what we call um, approach avoidance, which makes sense. We approach something because we want it. We avoid it because we don't want it, right? And it can play a really, really big role in our motivation and how much um, we have to give towards change, okay? So I'm going to let you guys, looks like somebody's still typing maybe, so we'll see. Um, some examples from the group, but I have some examples, right? Um, you can see the one on the page, I want to lose weight, but I love food. Another one is, I want to sleep in and hit snooze a hundred times, but I also want to keep my job. <laughs> I don't want to be late. Um, okay, somebody says, I want to lose weight, but exercise is the issue for me. Okay, so I want to follow my program. I want to lose weight, but exercise, there's a barrier to that somehow. Maybe it's I don't like it. Maybe um, I don't have time. There could be a, a bunch of different things. Um, I don't really go to, I want to go to the gym, could be another one, but I don't want to miss my favorite show. Okay? So there can be a lot of different things that we want and don't want at the same time. So what I want us to do right now is, don't look at the screen. <laughs> I shouldn't have put it yet. I want you guys to also be thinking and type in in the chat box, what are the costs of participating in this lifestyle change? So we often talk about the benefits, right? Weight loss, um, body composition changes. We lower our blood pressure. We can um, get off certain medications. We fit into clothes differently. We feel better. We can tie our shoes or run faster. You know, there's so many different things that are benefits to the program. But I want you guys right now to think about what are the costs of the program. Not just the money, but what are the things that you have to give up or the things you have to do that you don't want to do in order to not just be in this program, but to change your life. That's a hard one, so I'm going to give you some time. We've got some new people joining us. Welcome. If you just signed on. Right now what we're doing is not, we often talk about the benefits of changing our lifestyle and being in a program like this, but today, right now, what we're thinking about is what are the costs, and not just the financial costs, but what are the costs of um, being in this program, spending time changing, changing your life? <clears throat> There's a great one. The cost of time. Um, consuming food. Right? The cost not consuming food, the time consuming that it takes to, to make the food plan. Um, another one is not being able to eat what I want when I want it. My friends are all eating pizza, wings, and beer while I eat a slice and drink water. Okay, so there's a couple costs in that one, right? So not eating what you want, so the cost of what that desire is. And also there's a social cost. So you feel different. Right? And that might not be the issue that you're feeling, but some people have said, I'm, I'm different than my friends. I'm, I'm feeling different, and I don't like that. So the, the cost there could be being comfortable in a social situation. Um, okay, so I was on it. Right, yeah, you're different. Um, and so it doesn't bother some people, but a lot of people it does. Okay, so what are some other costs? Can you guys think of any other costs? Maybe the cost, my type in. I don't want to take one away from you. There's not a wrong answer here, too, by the way. Okay, so the financial cost, the food costs more. Okay. We've got some tips and tricks on how to make that lesson, right? Time away from your family. Time away from work. So there's a time is a big one. You're making, depending on what program you're in, that's a lot of appointments. So you're having to maybe take time off or you're having to flex time, which then impacts family time or your, your own alone time. Um, 
being able to maybe go work out after after work takes away from maybe homework time with your kid that you normally really enjoy doing. Or um, maybe it's the cost of having to face some fears. Maybe going to work out or wearing gym clothes has been something that you've been really scared of. Um, so maybe the cost of actually having to face that fear, that's a pretty big cost. Depending on, depending on your fears, depending on what you're comfortable with, and depending on what you value, okay? And that's going to be a really important word in what we're going to talk about next, because depending on what we value is going to determine what cost this is, okay? And I know this is kind of a really abstract concept, but it's going to make sense, too, okay? So, um, those are some of the costs. There's more, of course, depending. Um, but we're going to kind of move on from there. So the whole approach avoidance concept happens with the whole idea of conflicting values, right? The value of weight loss is in direct conflict with something else that is a stronger, could be food related like it says, but it also could be just a stronger value in general. So some of us may somewhat unconsciously believe that the cost of weight loss exceeds the benefit. Okay? My guess is that at the time that you came to the seminar, came and enrolled in a program, the benefits of weight loss outweighed the cost, right? And just because you felt that way at the beginning of the program doesn't mean that that can waver sometimes. Things change. Six months, a year is a long time. So are any of you at the place now where you feel sometimes that the cost of changing your lifestyle outweighs the benefits? And if you don't feel comfortable answering, that's okay. Not now. But you have been before, I'm guessing. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I want to bring in the point, too, and just reiterate. I just said this, but reiterate that the benefit of weight loss um, is greater than the cost of weight loss when we first sign up for a program, right? When we get into this place where um, maybe you've seen some successes, you're feeling better, or your lifestyle changes, your job changes, there's family changes, or your values kind of shift, then it could get to a place where the cost is greater than the benefit. And that's when motivation and consistency and behaviors and adherence to your plan can suffer. Makes sense, right? So there's a couple of things we can do to manage this that makes it um, first acknowledge it <laughs> and be aware of it. And then two is a cost benefit analysis, okay? Like really weighing the options, right? What hap I like this question. What happens if I don't do this? Okay? What happens if I don't go to the gym today after work? Well, that's just today. Um, if I don't go to the gym, then I get to take my child to this activity, right? If I don't go to the gym today, I'm not going to. I know I'm not going to be able to go tomorrow because of this appointment. Da, 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 da. So that means it's going to be two days in a row that I'm not at the gym. So this whole cost-benefit analysis, we know how to do that, right? Acknowledging the cost, acknowledging, yeah, I am going to have to. Um, maybe miss going to this extracurricular activity today so that I can go to the gym, but then tomorrow I get to do blank, 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 okay? And then shifting the focus to the benefit and the value of meeting this goal. Does that make sense to everybody? Anybody have questions? No questions. Good. I'm glad it does. Good. It helps to understand. Sometimes people um, will come in and be like, I don't know why I'm not adhering. Like, I know what to do. I'm trying to do this. I've done this before. Blah, blah, blah. Right? And I don't know why. Oftentimes, it's this. So what I challenge you, and I'm not going to give you time necessarily to do it now, but go ahead and like write this down as homework. Okay? And if you post in the Facebook group that you did the value homework, okay, then um, you can get an extra purple point. 
So if you're not in the Facebook group, we can talk about that too. Um, so the value homework, here's what the homework is. Being able to write a list of maybe the top 10 things that you value. Okay? That can be anything. Um, I value family. I also value um, self-care. Self-care is something I really value. I value my job. Um, I value, what else? What are some other things you guys value? You don't have to list them all, but just some other examples. Your marriage, yeah. Another thing, thinking about food-related health, good. Another thing food-related, we're like, well, what do you mean value food, right? Like, what do you mean value that? Well, I value pizza night and movie night on Fridays with my family. Now, is it just the pizza that I value? No, of course not. It's the, the time with my family. It's the fact that that's scheduled time. So... Is that more valuable than me being different or choosing a different food item than, than what my family's eating? For some people, it, it, the cost of those changes may outweigh the benefit. But for other people, it may not. So this is so individual to you guys. So I want you to, the homework again, is to come up with 10 things that you value and then look at those and see, do any of these interfere or take away from my ability to follow my plan and change my life? My guess is some of them will, okay? Depending on if your number one thing you value truly is interfering with your ability to stay on plan or your, your program, then you're probably having trouble adhering to your plan. If maybe your number seven or number nine are interfering, then you're probably not having as much trouble. So come up with your list of 10 things and just spend time evaluating them. And then once you've done that, you can just post in the Facebook group and say, Jordan's had us write our 10 things that we value and we've done it, you know, so you can get a purple point or something. Um, so do that. So that's your homework. Let's move on. Before I flip the page, flip the page, <laughs> um, you can tell I'm a pen and paper girl. Um, before I turn to the next slide, what, how would you guys define um, motivation? Any takers? An internal drive. Good. Anybody else? I value water too. Okay, nobody else. Okay, so we'll flip the page. And uh, motivation. So the definition is a general desire or willingness of someone to do something. So that internal drive, right? Because willingness is going to be internal. It's going to be the the thing that is that catalyst to change. So if you're willing. What motivated you all, and I'll remember, go back to what I had you write down at the beginning. What motivated you guys to come to the Weight Management Center and enroll in a program? Lots of people are typing. I'm going to give you guys some more time, okay? Preventing um, diabetes because of genetic history, right? Getting off medications, looking better in clothing, health reasons, okay? Medications again. Lots of health stuff, right? 
that's pretty highly motivating. And if you value, right, so another value is life, living, and health. Um, and my guess is that's a pretty high value for most people, right? And so when that is being, um, when there needs to be improvement in the thing that you value, which is your health and being able to live your life and live as long as possible, you're going to be motivated and activated to make changes, right? Good. Thank you, guys. Okay, so motivation. These are the five R's of motivation. One is what we just talked about, relevant. What prompted you to make the call to the weight management center? Two is the risk. This is kind of a different way of saying the benefits of losing weight. So what are the consequences if I don't lose weight? So taking what you guys just said, the consequences are getting diabetes, having high blood pressure, staying on medicine, getting on new medicine, not feeling comfortable in clothing. So those are the risks. If I don't change, what happens if nothing changes? Well, nothing changes, right? Um, so those are what we're thinking about when we're looking at number two risk. Number three, rewards. What will I gain by losing weight? This is one of my most favorite questions, and I can probably talk about this for an entire virtual group. <laughs> so when I think about weight loss, we think about losing, decreasing, you know, getting rid of things, you know, all of this, our weight, our medicine, all of this. But I think what's even more empowering is to really think about what am I going to gain, okay? So think about that and then type in, if you're willing, what am I going to gain by getting healthier, by weight loss? Good, you guys are typing. Gain energy, feeling better, looking nice, longer life, gain happiness. Anything else? Some people, you know, I've heard gain the, gain the ability to shop where you want to, not have to go to a special store or a special section. Being able to ride on a plane without a belt extender. Being able to get on any roller coaster ride with your kids. Um, there's so many things we can gain that are outside of just what we lose that can't quite be captured by a number on a scale, right? Okay. Number four, roadblocks. What will prevent me from losing weight? This goes back to that whole what we value thing. You can go back to that value list that you're going to make. Will time, will confidence, will my fear, will self-sabotage, will some disordered eating patterns. If I, if, I, if I overeat often in the evening, is that going to be a barrier? What is going to be that barrier? Okay, so we're going to have to really dig deep into ourselves and figure out what is that barrier. Some people come into the program and can list off roadblocks. Other people can't, and that's okay. That's part of our job as, as the behavioral team is to help you identify some of those roadblocks and figure out a strategy to lessen them, okay? And that's what number five is, is removing those roadblocks. How can I minimize them? How can I make them less frequent? So that way I can have more success and gain more freedom, more of the things that we talked about. Okay, so how do we know if we're ready? Good questions, right? When motivation and readiness are together, that's when we start moving into action. When we have kind of that reason, um, we're ready to start. That moves us into, into action, okay? So these are the stages of change. And there, it's important that they're not linear, so we kind of jump around all over the place. Remember at the beginning when I said sometimes the cost outweighs the benefits and sometimes the benefits outweigh the cost? This is kind of the same thing. So pre-contemplation is denial of the problem. That's when maybe you didn't even know weight management center existed. You were um, wearing your sweats more than your jeans, you know, things like that, right? 
Contemplation is when, okay, you're like, all right, I can't even get those jeans or pants on anymore. I'm having a really hard time tying my shoes, whatever it may be. And there's an awareness. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's kind of like, eh, okay. Number three is preparation. This is when you're like, all right, enough's enough. Kind of like drawing a line in the sand, making the call to the weight management center, all of that. Number four is enrolling in a program, getting started, and following the plan. And then number five is just doing it, just over and over, just doing it. And it's so important to know that just because you hit number five doesn't mean you can't go back to number one, two, or three. We jump around all over, all over based on life changes and the values that we've talked about, okay? Does that make sense? We good? Any questions so far? Okay. So tool for assessing your motivation. On a scale from one to five, how important it is for you to achieve a healthy weight. Okay, so when you look at that number, if your score was three or below, what would it take for it to become more important? What would have to change? And if you selected a four or five, why was your score where it was? So that's kind of the motivation. So that's the desire, right? And so then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how confident you are that you can achieve this healthy weight and follow through with the actions it's going to take to, to happen. So again, write it again. What we want is we want our confidence to match the motivation. We want, if we have a four or five in motivation, we want there to be a four or five in our confidence to be able to achieve it. If all the numbers are low, we need to have a conversation. We need to dig in a little bit deeper to see what needs to happen, right? Um, so do this. This is a little, a little tip for assessing that. Um, what is motivating you all now? I asked you that at the very beginning. That's all the slides we have for today. But I asked you at the beginning, what's motivating you to follow your plan in here now? So what would that be? And it can be the same as before, or it could be different. Anybody with me still? There's somebody. Yes, still here. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm asking if um, that's okay. And if you don't have one, then say that because that happens. We get so caught up on this initial motivating factor that, like, that catalyst that started us getting off the medicine getting in smaller clothing, that we're, we're just following the plan, right? Well, when those things happen, sometimes what happens is we don't then reassess for what is motivating us now. And that needs to happen. So my guess is, excuse me, my guess is that we need to kind of dig in deeper and say, okay, well, maybe I've met this goal. What's motivating me to continue this? What's motivating me to come to an appointment, to drink my water, to log my food, to eat at five to six eating episodes a day? So that's going to be really important for you guys. Um, I'm going to open up the floor to any questions. It's about 12.30, so we're going to be ending, like I said, a little bit early. Um, I'm going to hang out for a little bit, let you guys um, ask some questions if you need to, or talk about some motivation. Um, I'll give some reminders real quick. Um, I don't have it here with me, but we have next Tuesday, there's no virtual group. Um, on the 26th, there's no virtual group for the holiday. We will have virtual group on the 28th. So Thursday the 28th, there is going to be a virtual group. Um, Susanna is going to be doing that on the 28th. And then I'll be back on January 2nd for a virtual group. So 
again, the next state's reversal group are the 28th of December at noon and the 2nd of January at noon. Um, we also have some other holiday groups, and that's posted in the Facebook group and also around the, the clinic. And we also have some other, and I'm going to show you this, you probably won't be able to see it, but they're all over the clinic when you come in for appointments. There's the new group opportunity schedule for 2018, so it's got some information on there for you guys. Um, so be sure you grab that, and if you can come to um, any of those groups, we welcome you. Um, nobody's got any questions that doesn't look like, so I'm going to go ahead and end the group. Make sure you complete the survey for today, and then what we'll do is, um, and then you can swing by the nutrition shop and get purple points, okay? How to join Facebook. Awesome. Thanks, Linda. Um, you can Google, hold on, I have my phone. So go on the Facebook and look for um, Wake Forest Baptist Health Medical Weight Management, okay? And there's actually, give me a second. No, I don't have it. Um, I thought I had the sheet, but yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's Wake Forest Baptist Health Weight Management Center, um, Medical Weight Management. And you have to ask to join that, and they'll um, they'll approve you. They make sure that you're a patient or have been a patient and come in because it's a closed group. So that way, it's pretty private, and we um, we all post um, in it you know, throughout the week different things. So that's a that's a great way to stay involved and get some announcements too. Also, in the lobby, there's a new bulletin board that's going to have some announcements um, on it over there near window number three. So check that out and um, have a wonderful holiday, you guys, and I'll see you on the 2nd. Alrighty, bye-bye.